Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of That's Not an Error. What is this series? This is the series where I go on eBay and I'm looking for people who are selling errors at ridiculous prices or who just don't even bother to do any homework at all. They do no research, they make up their own price on a note and frankly don't care. They're out to steal as much money from you as possible. They're counting on the fact that you aren't going to look up the values of these notes they want to simply put out their price and cover their tail by putting or best offer. That way, if you look up the price and see what it's actually worth, you have every right to make an offer for what the note is actually worth, but they don't have to accept it. They can continue trying to sell their item, trying to scam somebody out of hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So what do we have this time? Our favorite seller, our new favorite seller, CHSO541, Mr. Originality. He has. <sighs> this is a 1902 Plainback National. We know it's a national because we can see it's got a charter number on there. And we know it's a Plainback because, well, there it is on the back. There is no value listed. There is no date listed. So it's not a value back. It's not a date back. It is just simply stained. And, of course... It is discoloration stains, and if we look at the front, it did get the net grade, which the net grade means that there is something wrong with the note, okay? Once you put a note in a case, once you put a note in a case like this, there are certain things that you can or cannot see. You can't see tears because a tear will look like the note is folded if they line up the teared ports just right. Uh, if a note is glued back together, that's not going to show in a case, and it's not something that you can actually feel with your fingers because it's encapsulated. So whenever there's an issue with a note, they'll designate it net. Now, as far as pricing goes, if you see a 15 and a 15 with a net, which one should be lower priced? Correct, the net. So you have 15 to understand the grade, and you have net to understand the specific condition. Uh, think of it as this is the grade of the note. And if we look at the back, you can see it says discoloration stains. So what, you're, what they're saying is if it wasn't for the discoloration and stains on this note, this note would be graded 15. They don't want to lower the condition of the note because of those particular stains. Because just because there is a stain here, doesn't mean that the rest of the note isn't in the appropriate condition. All right. So this is from Allentown, Pennsylvania. For those of you who collect nationals, the bigger the state and the further east the state, the more common the national. So if you get notes from New York or Pennsylvania, there are a lot of banks that printed a lot of notes. That's where the population clusters were. <sighs> They're easy to come by. Okay. If you talk about a note from Hawaii or California or Alaska, you're talking about much smaller distributions and huge prices. The bigger question though is how do you keep track of all this stuff? Well, in Paper Money of the United States, that's the blue book, or I should say the current blue book, this one here, Paper Money of the United States, it does give you ideas on prices. It tells you about signature combinations and the FR number, and it gives you a guideline for the prices. But then down below, it does go by state and tell you the number of banks per state and the average difference in value for certain things. Like, here's one. Nevada only has nine banks. In a fine, you can see all these are $175, but in for Nevada, that one's $250. For Montana, or uh, $500. For Montana, that's $250. And here, Alaska, $20,000 for a note in fine. So that's just one of the ways to break it down. But there are more specific ways. Um, the more specific way to break down the value of this note would be to use the Don Kelly book. And this is the Don Kelly book of national bank notes. This book goes for about 70 bucks. And you're going to see that it covers, it's thick, 
really thick, covers roughly all 15,000 banks, and it gives an accurate description of all kinds of stuff. For instance, uh, the number of printed, the approximate values, how they were printed. You know, this is uh, four notes that were $5 a piece on this sheet, uh, four, no four 20s on this sheet, you know, and it tells you all the different types. Uh, you've got the original, series of 1875, brownbacks, datebacks, uh, you know, it, it goes through everything about these notes. Tough book to find, great source of information. But what do we have? What are we going to look at? Like I said, this is from Allentown, Pennsylvania. And if we look at the back, we know this is just a plain back because there's nothing on the back. So let's go back here. Let's see what he has to say about this. For sale is a $20 national currency, 1902 plain back, that's PB. There's the charter number, 1312. Uh, Allentown National Bank, Allentown, Pennsylvania. The charter number, the signature is on there. The FR number, the note you see is exactly what you get. Thanks for visiting his page. Okay. Now, all of that is accurate. That is all 100% true. What part isn't true? $699. That's the part that isn't true. What do these notes go for? Well, let's take a peek. Here is, like I said, paper money of the United States. Okay. And we're talking about 20. And we are talking, he said, uh, FR650. So that's the signature combination. So that's this one right here, FR650, Lions and Roberts. And here, in a VG8, it's 145. In an F12, it's 175. And in a 20, it's 250. So according to this book, these are the generic prices, remember. His is a 15, which is going to fall somewhere between that uh, 175 and 250. But it's a net. Because it's a net, that means it's going to go down. So even if it was, you know, somewhere between there, if we were to call it 200 because it's a net, now we're back down to that 175 without a problem. If we look down here at all the different states, let's see. Here's Pennsylvania, 827 banks. Not like the 15 of Rhode Island or the 57. 827 banks. That's a lot of banks. That means they aren't rare. Okay. But what if we get a little bit more specific and look up the exact bank in the Kelly book? What are we going to find there? Let's look. There's Allegheny. There it is. 1322 Allentown National Bank of Allentown. And if we look, here's uh, the original, the series 1875, the brown back, 1902 red seal, the 1902 date back, and here's the 1902 plain back. It has on the page three tens and a 20 is how it was printed. And you can see the price listed, $125. $125. So let's start with a value of $125 on this particular note. And, well, it's graded net. That means we have to bring it down, which puts this note at roughly $100. Bucks. Agreed? I mean, there, we just did all the research. We did all, we did more research than the seller did. This note's worth about a hundred bucks. I mean, is anybody going to doubt anything I just said there? I, I backed it up with all the different books. I showed you exactly uh, what we're dealing with. He wants $699. He wants $700 for this note that books out at a hundred bucks. He is convinced that when you grade a note, it increases the value. No, when you grade a note, it defines the grade, it defines the condition. That's all it does. So is this a 15 or a 20? Did grading it change the price? No, it simply identified it as a 15 and a net, which means there's a problem with it. So this note is worth 
about $100. He wants seven times that amount because he's not a scammer or anything. He's not trying to rip anybody off. He's being honest. You know how I know he's being honest? Because in his comments, he says, God bless. That's how I know he's being honest because God is on his side. <sighs> Some people. Anyway, no, this note's worth 100 bucks. Uh, he still has more stuff. So even though you've seen four of this guy's th items already, we're going to do more because it's all garbage. He also sells uh, silver items. I don't know anything about silver. I know about paper money. I can only assume if he's trying to rip people off this bad with his currency that his silver prices are equally as bad. <sighs> it's criminal selling something for seven times the value. If he would spend $70 and buy a book, he'd know. But why would he, why should he have to spend money to prove the value of his items? You know, why, why should he do that? That's your job as the buyer. And if you as the buyer don't like his price, you should move on, or at least that's what he says. Even though he is sitting here with his item at his price, right next to his name, He's proud enough to put this out there, so I'm proud enough to show you guys. All right, if you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.